Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a flavor-packed chicken tortilla soup. So let's get started. First off, let's make our tortilla strips, grab four yellow corn tortillas, and we're gonna chop these into quarter-inch strips. These guys are gonna give you that wonderful crunch that makes chicken tortilla soup so delicious. It's like a beautiful play of textures and flavors. Lovely. Set this aside, and now, in our Dutch oven, we're gonna add a quarter cup of olive oil and get it nice and hot. Warm your oil over medium-high heat, and while that's heating up, we can finish our prep. All right, one medium to large onion, and I'm just gonna give this a dice, so little vertical cuts. Using my knuckle as a guide so I don't chop my fingers off with this razor-sharp knife, and chop it up. So easy and safe. Before you start crying, you're gonna want to um, have, de-seed, and dice a jalapeno, or two, up to you on how spicy you want it. If your pepper is super hot, you should really wear gloves because, you know, the oil will get on your fingers, you rub your eye, and bad things happen. Don't touch your face. My mom, who's from Mexico, would literally never wear gloves. The idea of it is very, very alien. My oil's nice and hot, so I'm gonna take my tortilla strips and add them into the pan. Cook them until crispy, about a minute, just stirring occasionally. And now we can finish dicing up our jalapeno. While occasionally stirring. These crisp up so quickly, it's really just 60 seconds. So this soup and pozole were my two favorites growing up on the Mexican side. I love Greek chicken soup too, but so good. Also, Italian wedding soup is really delicious. Let me know if you want that video. As soon as they've crisped up, transfer to a paper-lined pan and let them drain, but don't forget to sprinkle with about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. By the way, if you love delicious things but you haven't subscribed, hit that sub button. There's two new recipes every single week, plus extra shorts, so there's always something delicious on the horizon. It's time to return our pan to medium heat. And now we're gonna add the onion, the jalapeno, and some garlic too. So the recipe calls for minced garlic, but I'm tired of mincing garlic. I'm busy, so you don't have to mince it. You could use a garlic press and it works really well too. Stir frequently, you don't want your onions to burn. And now that they're in, I'm gonna press three or so cloves of garlic right inside. You could definitely use minced garlic just don't buy the pre-minced garlic. That is not the same. I love this thing. I haven't minced garlic in months since I bought it. We're gonna stir this for about four minutes in total until the onion is softened. You know, I love having this for lunch with extra tortilla strips. So if you're making this recipe, I would really recommend doubling the amount of tortillas and you add a little bit of extra olive oil as well because your going to be snacking, mm. and everyone wants more. Mm. So I might be biased, but I think of this as a Mexican soup. Some people say it's derived from sopa azteca, which has similar flavors, but it's very delicious. Very popular in Mexico and also in California too. You can let me know if it's popular where you live too, or if it's just like a California thing, I don't know. I don't live in California anymore, I live in Connecticut, so. There aren't enough Mexican restaurants here for me to make a decision on that. Okay. My onion softened, so now I'm gonna add four cups of chicken broth. We're also adding one 50-ounce can of black beans that have been drained and rinsed, one and a half cups of frozen corn. You could, of course, cook the beans yourself, have fresh corn for this as well. Everything is gonna work. I'm also adding a 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes. It's not a pleasant sound. I'm adding a teaspoon of cumin, ground of course, and one and a half teaspoons of chili powder. You can use hot or mild. I'm starting off with half a teaspoon of salt, we can add more later if needed, and half a teaspoon of cracked black pepper. I'm also adding in one pound of chicken breasts. These are gonna be shredded later, and if you want, you could definitely add like one and a half pounds, even two pounds if you want it to be really chickeny. Chickeny is a word. You know, Shakespeare invented like 1,200 words. You can do it too. Give this a stir. We're gonna let it come to a boil, but then as soon as that happens, reduce to a simmer. 
My soups come to a boil, reduced to medium low so it can go to a simmer, and just stir occasionally. This chicken has to cook all the way through, the flavors need to come together, and you're gonna get rid of some of that excess water. All that steam is just flavorless water disappearing from your soup, so it's a concentrated, delicious spoonful in every bite. Stir occasionally, and this will come together so quickly. In the meantime, think about your garnish. Yes, the tortilla strips are a must have, but I always like to have slices of avocado. You could have some California olives, a dollop of sour cream. The soup can become like a total meal. When I would have pozole as a child, it would be piled high with cabbage and lime juice, and it's just like so crunchy that it was like a full hearty meal. It's not like some thin soup. And this is the same way. In fact, if you wanted to, you could have some thinly sliced cabbage with this as well, and extra lime juice, a little salt, It'd be really good. Don't mind me, just thinking about recipes to accompany the soup. <clears throat> My soup simmered away, and you can see how much has reduced out of it. Started here, and all the way reduced down. What's left is thicker, glossy, pure flavor. If you don't like such a rich, flavor-packed soup and you want it thinned out a bit, you like a watery soup, just add some more chicken stock or even water and that's fine. I'm not gonna do that. All we have to do now is grab our chicken breasts and get to shredding. So this is really easy. If you have two forks and you just pull it apart and shred it into smaller pieces. And then we're gonna dump it back in so it can get coated with flavor. Wait, I was discussing garnishes earlier and I stopped at avocado and sour cream. I got distracted by the other soups I love. You need to have, unless you're a soap taster, you need to have like oodles of cilantro, just like gobs of it. I could also have some chopped up scallions or green onions, diced red onion, really go to town on it and just like add more and more and more flavor in. I don't know what, if any of that is actually traditional, but in my house, everyone got to do whatever they wanted with garnishes. So, by the way, like, I'm not giving you the very best tutorial on shredding chicken, but if you've never done it before, you just pull it apart into smaller pieces, and then if you want even smaller pieces, you rake with the grain to get those little shreddy pieces of chicken that can sit on your spoon comfortably along with the other flavors in your soup. When the days are short, and the night is long, the one thing that cheers me up, aside from a cornucopia of desserts, is a warm, hearty soup. I could have like basically any soup with something crunchy or crusty. So here it's the tortilla strips, but normally it's some crusty French bread and maybe a glass of wine or another beverage, and I'm set. It's like so good. Soup is a meal. Let me know in the comments if you think soup is a meal or like my husband, you think soup is just water in a bowl and doesn't count for anything. <laughs> I made soup for dinner. What? That's not dinner. <laughs> All right, and just like that, my chicken is shredded, so I'm gonna return this back to the pot. Mm, it's raining chicken. Stir that chicken in, get it all coated with that delicious sauce, basically. <laughs> Look how thick that is, it's lovely. And now grab at least one lime, so important. Give it a slice, and we're gonna squeeze this right in. This is necessary. You need the punch of acidity, and honestly, like every, nearly every soup should have it. Not the creamy soups, really, but all these tomato-based soups need like a little something. It's either gonna be lime juice, lemon juice, or vinegar. So like vinegar is often like the nice way to garnish a soup just before serving. Give it a stir. Oh, that flavor gets worked in together. And now it's time for a taste. Always taste before you serve. Mm. It might need a dash of lemon, a sprinkle of salt, really any other flavor might need to go in here. You're not gonna know until you give it a taste. This is fine for everyone else. So Brian and the kids will have it, enjoy it. Mine will have like two extra limes put in because I really like that zing. All right, let's plate it up. Garnish with sour cream, avocado, cilantro, cheese, tortilla strips, and anything you'd enjoy. That is 
pure flavor. It's so well balanced, it's just delicious. And I hope you had a chance to make this recipe. If you like this video, check out my soup playlist.